All right. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the week three of uh, our six weeks training. Today uh, is a, another day and a very wonderful and special day for our training. Like we always say, this is just a training session. We decided to give out to people who are following us, people who are actually interested in studying abroad, and also not just studying abroad, but going back home to make impute in their home countries. So we, we welcome all of you to this training. And uh, today we are going to talk on a very special, one of the uh, crucial aspects of your graduate application process, so which is uh, writing professional emails to professors, because this is a very wonderful aspect. You know, people call it, I don't know who gave you that name, writing cold emails to professors. That is what generally people call it. But I call it writing mails to professors, you know, asking for supervision because through such mails, you will be able to, if the professor has opening, he can probably recommend you for uh, funding and all that. So writing such emails is very technical. So you would want to write an email in such a way that it's, you are not actually bugging because most of them don't have all the time in the world. And then you are putting a lot of things about yourself just in one, just, just in a concise and professional manner. So it's a skill, it's a skill. And most of these skills are not taught. We, nobody taught us these skills when we were in the universities. It's some of the things, it's, it's the things we learned. So we decided to teach you guys how to do this and how we were able to do during our own time. And I'm happy that today we have a lot of scholars on the background that will uh, address questions at the end of the program, at the end of the presentation by Linda. So at least I have uh, Stanley, my man from Nigeria. We were together down there at the Michael Abba University. We started together and we ended, and then he's in UK and I'm in US. And I'm hoping that one day you'll come and meet me here in the US. So, and I also have Webinna in the, in the background, Webinna taught us last week, Webinna held uh, his own program last week, and then he delivered speech on uh, research, on how to write research proposals for admissions. And also I have in the background, good luck, an Erasmus scholar and also my right-hand man. Uh, he's, in fact, he's a, he's a brain behind a lot of things we are doing here. So every time I always consult him, my brother, tell me how we are going to do this. So the guy is also a scholar. I believe that by next week, okay, next two weeks, yeah, next two weeks, he, we will hear from him on his own topic. So, and other scholars in the field, I will keep on introducing them. So, without wasting much of our time, I would want to uh, talk about Linda, who is our speaker today. She obtained her first degree in microbiology at University of Ibadan, Nigeria, with her first class and was celebrated as the best graduating student in her department, not just department, faculty, and, at, and also at the institutional level. Now, she had a similar story, and uh, she completed her first MSc in microbiology at University of Ibadan, Nigeria, with a distinction. And then she, her second mass MSc was also in ocean technology and engineering. And she bagged a strong distinction in one of the world's best universities in China on a fully funded scholarship. She's currently pursuing her PhD, and her research interest explores interaction and feedback loops between microbiology, ocean technology, and cell or molecular biology, subjected to identifying and addressing research gaps relevant to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Some of her creative works are published in highly indexed peer group journals with over 137 citations in Google Scholar and ResearchGate. Presently, Linda is general coordinator of Organization of Masters Grooming Initiative under the umbrella of Organization of African Academic Doctors. Linda contributes to society by mentoring youth, sharing her wealth of experience, especially through her online visibility on YouTube. So she's known as MC Linda. So, my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome Linda Mwichedema. 
on the stage. Linda, you have the floor now. Thank you so much. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, like people in my location. It's night already for us. So greetings to everyone. My name is Mbe Chidemma Chiamaka Linda. I would like to say thank you to the organizers of the training and uh, most especially thank you, Mr. Stan, for the introduction. I'm grateful. But I'm just Linda. All those things are just professional packaging. You know, I'm Linda, the young sister, elder sister to some people, friend to some people, <laughs> neighbor to some people. Yeah, I'm just Linda. I'm a very, just one small girl like that. So don't go overthink what you say, you know? Yeah, because most of the time, let me just start on this light note. Like most of the time when, like I don't even remember any of these things you are saying until when maybe someone say, oh, Linda, I need your biography or something. Okay, then I start looking for all the things to put there. Most most of the time, 90% of my life, I don't even know any, I, I don't remember any of these things. And um, even when I get to bed to sleep, I don't, what I think about is what have I done, who have I impacted, or how have I contributed to one or two things going on. So I, I thank God for the achievement so far. Yes, I do thank God. But at the same time, I, I don't allow it to cloud my, my vision or what I would want to see. So let's get to the theme of the day. How to write a professional email to a professor or potential supervisor. In this presentation, I will try as much as possible to be practical and um, be as simple as possible and as brief as possible so that you have the leverage to ask questions. I would do well to answer your questions. And I'm so glad to let you know that we also have very good minds and very good brains on this platform right now who would also help in answering some of your questions too. Do well to draft them and keep sending them to the chat panel or you raise your hand towards the end of the presentation so we help answering your questions. This is the content I will be giving today, like my table of content, if I would put it. I'll be giving a brief introduction and I'll be making us understand reasons why email could be important. And um, I will give a blueprint, just like a step. I wouldn't want to give a template, like a full template because over time, I realized when I give people templates, what they do is they just change my name and use it. Funny enough, when you make use of templates in that manner, it's very dangerous because some of these professors work as a team. Some of them collaborate. So things like this, they share to each other or they discuss about it. So imagine I'm a professor. I want to recruit a PhD student and I'm looking for a student that is good at maybe making use of TEM. That means the electron kind of the microscope, which could be used for 3D modeling. So, and then a particular candidate had sent an email to me and I forwarded it to a professor who I'm collaborating with. And that same professor who is sent it to also have something similar and they get to know that it's the same person without modification. Oh my God. It tells a lot about that candidate. So please, I wouldn't give a full template, but I will tell you everything you need to put. So I know when you are trying to type or write it by yourself, you would make some modifications. This is the table of content. For introduction, the question that always pops is why email are not the favorite social media platform that we use for our day-to-day -day communication with friends. One thing you should always bear in mind mind is compared to all of the social media platforms you are seeing on my page right now, like the YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, WeChat, WhatsApp, and the rest of them we would like to use to communicate on a daily basis. Email is more or less formal compared to this other kind of social media platform. So it is more formal. And one thing you should know is that professors are more or less professional individuals that stand for ethics and they have a proper etiquette. So basically, we would want to treat them professionally when dealing with them. And again, it tells a lot about the individual. If you are chatting with me on YouTube or on Snapchat, I would just take it as fun. But when you send an email to me, I see it as something formal. And my level of um, interest and my level of seriousness to responding to you differs. 
So I would want to believe that the uh, majority of us on this platform right now know about some of these emails, or should I say means of communication, like this mailing platform or engines, like the Gmail, the Yahoo Mail, and the, uh, and the Outlook. The three of them, basically, I know everyone listening to me at least should have one of these or three of them. I make use of three of them, depending on what I am doing. If you don't have, please try as much as possible to open an, a Gmail account or a Yahoo Mail account or an Outlook account. That's for the Microsoft. The primary goal is why do we have to email a professor? So let's take for instance now. In my case, I am a science student and I would want to work with a professor who is science inclined and area of research basically dealing with environmental sciences. And then I go online to search and then I came across such news about MIT professors who are most cited. Definitely, it tells a lot that these professors do quite a large number of research and they have maybe good funding. That means there's possibility of scholarship and working with them will be very productive because there are people that support research. So in this situation, MIT now has become my, my institution of interest because of this. So I would mark MIT in my Excel file as my institution of interest. And these professors that we have seen in the previous slide, I would go and search for them. So the process of looking for these professors is what we call shortlisting. So the same way as a candidate, you will be shortlisted. Professors, as a candidate, you should also shortlist professors. So I advise people, some people go this way, for maybe in a particular school, they just send to all the professors regardless of the research interest. No, I wouldn't encourage that. If you want to send, be specific. Even if you want to pick like five professors from an institution, ensure that there is something linking their research area so that even if they discuss, they will know that, okay, this particular candidate is reaching out to us simply because we share similar interests or something of those sorts. Because if I am a professor and someone dealing with something entirely different tells me that a particular candidate had emailed him and I am dealing with something different and then we get discussing and I realize that the same student or the same candidate also emailed me, that is a red flag. It tells me that this candidate does not know what he or she wants. Now we know the institution of interest. Now we know the professors who want to email then we'll go into their website, each of them, and then check. Let's say this is Professor A, this is Professor B, and this is Professor C. So I went through Professor A, and I realized that his research interest has to do with maybe bioremediation or the utilization of microorganisms for biotechnological applications. And then I went to B, and I realized that what he does is he makes use of microorganisms for electrical works like doing things that are related to electrical stuff. And I went to the, the Professor C, and then I realized that he does work relevant to maybe bio cement or biosensor or biomaterial. Okay, for me, I would want to pick one and two. I wouldn't want to go for biosensor. I would prefer to go for electrical stuff because I have some idea. I would want to go for someone doing things on remediation and biotechnology, okay, because I have an idea. So by so doing, I have shortlisted people who I would want to communicate with. So as a professor, the professor is waiting for, stu for students to send in emails to show that they are willing to work with them or maybe show interest, right? As these professors are doing this, as a candidate, you should also have something in mind. Okay, you should also have some things you would want to know about the professor. That is the major reason why people send email. Understanding if there is a link between you and the professor. Because sometimes they advertise things on their website. The website is so old, like as old as maybe 10 years ago, and it was not updated. And they don't do research in that line anymore. So you're emailing the professor. You didn't check some of the recent research. And then the, maybe the way you sent your email, the professor is interested in you. And then it gets to tell you, OK, there's no problem. Check social -so papers and see if you are interested to keep them um, to work with me. The ability of the professor to reply you also dwells in the strength of the email you had sent. The major criteria for shortlisting a professor is first answering the question, what research am I interested in? In answering this question, you could think about the following thing, okay? Do you want to continue in your past research or do you want to do something different? 
maybe simply because it has more potential, more future potential. This could be country specific, okay? For example, if someone study, let's say veterinary medicine in Nigeria, and the person is to work in Nigeria, there's high possibility that a person who studied vet med in the United States and would work in the United States would have a more fulfilled career. This is simply because US is a better market. So you have to think towards this when contacting professors. You want to know the research they are doing. If it's, is this something you want? Another tip to answering this question is, what can you contribute to this professor? What can you contribute? Is it in terms of methodology or maybe you have been able to identify a research gap that you need this or an expertise in being able to carry out the research? In that situation, that is also a reason to contact a professor. And maybe you already know how to make use of an equipment and you know that this equipment could help in, so, in answering some questions. Like recently, a training kind of equipment in the biological sector is the use of cryo-EM, a microscope, in answering questions in the biological sector. So maybe you already have a skill in this, but you would want to see how you can use it in answering questions in the professor's area of research. That is also a reason to contact a professor. But an easy way to know if you will be a match is you have to read some recent papers to know, okay, this professor is this kind of person I, I would want to go for him or her. Exploring social media could also be helpful, okay? If you see a professor who you could go and check his trend in responding to chat or something like that, that could let you know the temperament of the professor. It could give you a little hint on the temperament. So you would want to know if you want to still go ahead to communicate with the person or email the person. So you have to think about the possibility of identifying research gap. I had mentioned that already. And one thing you should bear in mind is postgraduate study outside the country, like masters in China would take two and a half to three years, and US and UK could be one and two years respectively. The duration is something to think about when emailing a professor, because you would want to do something you love, something you like, because if you want to do PhD, it is five to six years. So you have to think about the, think about the research the professor is doing. Is this something I would want to do? And again, another thing you need to check out for is like there are some professors that are very rigid when it comes to publication. If they don't publish in Nature, they don't publish. If they don't publish in PNAS, they don't publish. So you should know that such kind of professor, you may spend eight years abroad doing PhD, okay? So this is not village people, it's not village people. It is just something you need to check out for, okay? These things, they happen. So please do well to check. With this now, we have identified our professors. So you need to also bear in mind that these professors will be looking for excellent students who share similar research interests, just the way you are also trying to answer these questions to know if it is okay to email this professor. So a student with a unique knowledge of some machines, or maybe you are good in machine learning, artificial intelligence, okay, that's, those areas are also very interesting. Even in the biological sectors, we are not making use of machine learning. Like some work I'm doing now on Amera, we make use of deep learning. I think individuals these days should be able to equip themselves in some things outside their field of study, because it could come handy when you want to get a new posting or maybe new placement with a professor showcasing those special skills that not everybody in your field know or is, can be able to do it, make you outstanding. So you become more of a better competitor regardless. So a student who can help with current projects, majority of those professors, one thing you should know is you just get scholarship, scholarship funding, funding. Most of the time they are taxes. These are tax, okay? Tax from the country or something like that. So they would want to take a student who is responsible who can help them see that they fulfill this project because these grants or projects are given to them from taxpayers' money. All these things are things you have to think about in order to make up your mind, do I want to email this professor? I would want to give a breakdown of the components of an email. So basically, the first thing is the subject line, okay? I tell people, subject line alone can give you the admission. Like for me, subject line is the bomb. I want to ask a question. So this is a subject line I have put in arrow by, like you can see this red arrow, it's a subject line, okay? So this is another 
jet line. Greetings, my friend. Please, in less than 30 seconds, one minute, I would want to know between A and B, which of them do you think is best? And you can put it in the chat panel. Between A and B, which of them is the best? Or which of them is a better subject line? And why? Okay. Uh, one, person, one person said B. One person said B. And why? He said B is a better subject line because it points the recipient to who the sender is. That is one of the reasons. Thank you so much. Please take note of the person. The person has a gift. Thank you. Okay. The subject line to a professor should be able to tell the professor, is this my current student or an incoming student or a potential student? When approaching a professor, your subject line should be able to tell the professor this. The subject line should be able to tell the main purpose of that email. That is why I say a subject line can gain you whatever audience you want from a professor, even without the professor reading the full email. Using your name as subject line is the worst thing you can ever do to yourself because your name automatically appears once you send an email at the left-hand side. So even if you use Gmail, it's the same thing. Your name would appear. Try to utilize your subject line in making the professor know that, okay, I am a potential student and at the same time, I would like to join your lab. So there are different ways at which people could draft a subject line when approaching a new supervisor. You could use something like a potential research student and then you put maybe the course of study, environmental engineering. Now the person knows that is a potential student and this person is interested in engineering, environmental engineering. So sometimes a professor could have different area of specialty, maybe specialty in microbial ecology, in variology, in environmental, in medical. So you could alight that area you would want to join in the subject line. But most importantly is making the professor know that this is a prospective postgraduate student. So you could use something like that. Prospective postgraduate student, civil and environmental engineering. Prospective PhD student looking for a research position. And, and another very unique way of putting your subject line or writing your subject is adding a little bit of your expertise something that stands you out. Okay, imagine I had worked in IBM and I want to join a lab that works on software or hardware or backend, something relating to computer, okay? And I have already worked with IBM for like two years. I would surely include that in my subject line. I would write it there, prospective PhD student with two years experience working with IBM. I would put something like that there. This is not so common, people including that, but you should be sure that that particular skill is outstanding. You know, working in IBM is not, it means I already have a practical knowledge of what is being taught. IBM is one of the biggest companies when it comes to computer, maybe software or hardware. I have made mention of this already, some do or don't, don't use your name. Don't use your complete name or your name anyhow. Just don't even put your name in that place. It's wasting of space. Prospective PhD students looking for a research position. Prospective PhD students with experience in, in cryo EM or something like that. Like something hot. Look for a hot trending stuff in your field of study. Put it there. Don't put your name. Putting your name is a no-no. Okay? Another thing is how do you address these people? How do you address them? One thing is, regardless, you have to be polite, okay? So there are different ways, different ways people would want to address me. Okay, I am Mbechi Dima Chiamaka Linda, and you want to write an email to me because you want to work under me. So please, this is a trend of like different ways people would want to address me. So please, I want someone to put on the chat, which of, this, which of them, A, B, C, D, is the best way to address me as a professor if you are to email me and why the person should the person should also say why someone said e because it recognizes your position okay I, I saw another one d it is a formal way of greeting another person said the e is a professional salutation because it carries this, the title 
Okay, somebody said E. Yeah, yeah I think two persons, two persons are of the view that it should be E, Why one person is of the view that it should be D. That's what I'm on this. The answer is E. You have gone to my personal profile on my school website. As a professor, please address me as professor, okay? We just have to be polite, okay? But when you come into the system, you are now my student. You can come in and go to the man. You don't even have to put any respect, anything there. When we are talking face to face, now you are my student and get you the man. It's all right. That's my name. Okay. So, like outside of Nigeria, if you want, if you meet professors, you just call them by their name. They answer you. Okay. But when you, you are sending in an email, this is someone you don't know. You want the person to leave what he or she is doing read through your email and reply you and sense of being polite is not there when you put dear friend okay that is out of it i don't know how i became your friend okay when you put dear sir or man <laughs> like seriously you don't even know if i'm a male or female that tells me that you never went through my profile it tells a lot it tells the professor that you don't even know him or her it's even possible you don't even know the research they are doing if you are putting sir or ma, it is annoying. If you put sir or madam, it is so, so annoying. And if you put my name, D is a little bit fair, but I think that we should try as much as possible to be polite, okay? Everybody likes good things, okay? If I, if, if I call you, if I call you miss, missus, mister, you feel a little bit happy or there's this respect that comes with it, right? And beside that, you don't know this person from nowhere. So putting that title professor is very essential. Another thing you might want to put is doctor, but most of the time, once the person is already a professor, once the person is teaching the university outside of Nigeria, most of the time they are professors, maybe assistant professors, associate professors, something like that. So just address them as professor. You don't have to tell them that, oh, you are associate prof. You are not yet a full-blown prof. <laughs> or maybe you are assistant professor, not a full-blown. Just put professor. It's all right. It will remove your bada uh, or even one hair from your skin. Yeah, so please, let's try to be polite. Good gestures can be expressed in writing, but people fail to understand. Good gestures can be expressed in writing. If you tell me, dear friend, and you are trying to work with me, like I will just block you in a way that you can never send email to me again because good gestures can be expressed in writing, not just through speaking, okay? So please remember the key word, you have to be polite. This tells the professor how well the potential student has taken time to know him or her and is the student a professional? Does this person act in that manner? Because when you become a PhD student, you should treat everything more or less as though they are professional, okay? The way you talk, the way you do your presentations, the way you do everything should be professional, okay? So if you already start by calling me dear friend, then it tells me that this one would not survive. For the body of the email, most of the time, please don't go above three paragraphs. One thing you should bear in mind is that these professors are busy individuals. They always have grants to apply for, they have funding to request for, they have presentation to support their ongoing grant, they have research, they have papers they have submitted for publications and they're rejected and they have to review them. They have papers that are already going forth to being published and they have to review. They have grants to apply for, they have students to supervise. So not because you want to come, then you send like 10 paragraphs. You want to tell me about your village people, about your culture, please, uh, please, in as much as the course you are coming to study is not art or something relating to culture, I don't need to story about your culture. So most importantly, your first paragraph should be introducing you. For me, when you want to introduce yourself, okay, my name is Mbechi de Machema Kalinda, and I'm a graduate from the University of Ibadan or a graduate from Zhejiang University in China. You talk about your degree, you talk about what you have achieved. You talk about one or two outstanding awards. You talk about some achievements about you. You you make it known to the person that you would want to join his or her lab through maybe this scholarship in this year or that year. 
everything should be personal. That first paragraph is more or less like being personal. But to the end of the first paragraph, you should let the person know, oh, I look forward to joining your research group or team in this year. Or Because most of the time, once they read the first paragraph, they may not go down. Just the same way some professors treat emails. Once they read the subject line, they don't go, they don't even bother opening it. They feel they already know what he, the person is trying to say and they know, okay, do I want to answer or not? So that's why most of the time we realize our emails are not being replied. Imagine you send an email to me and then you write in the Chidima Chama calendar, who are you? <laughs> that's the question. Who are you? Like that should not be your subject. And then you come to the body, all you just wrote is, I am Uge Chidima Chama calendar. Okay. Where are you coming from? I'm not someone that would want to start writing, I'm a Nigerian and the first daughter of my family, no. It should be something academic, okay? Like your awards, your grades, and all those things. Important. At the end, you just let the professor know that you have expertise in this and you look forward to joining his or her research team through this, 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 at the university of this in this year or this um, section or something like that, maybe fall 2020 days. Most of the time, I like to end it that way. So if the person reads just the first paragraph and fling the email, he or she already knows that, okay, this student has this kind of qualification and wants to join my lab. That tells it already. So the paragraph two would tell your past research experiences and if there are any link with your potent, like your future career plans and what the professor is doing. So when this is the place where you kind of a little bit pour your heart, okay? So here you talk about some expertise. You talk about how you were able to use a particular trending skill, a particular trending kind of technology in answering a question, which is related to what the professor is answering using maybe another method. And you look forward to bringing your method to better his own research and add value. You know, one mistake people make when writing emails is, you are not just, uh, just see it, it's a two-way thing, okay? When I send an email to a professor, I also know that this professor, you taking me is a plus to you too, okay? So sometimes people write email and they make it feel as though, oh, it's a blessing for the professor to take me. No, it is also a blessing for the professor taking me as, as much as it is also a blessing for me being accepted. Okay, so it's a two-way thing. Okay, so that level of confidence, a little bit of confidence when expressing your research experiences and how it links to that of your potential supervisor matters a lot. Especially letting them know that this technology, when you bring it into their research, will help better their research. You could cite one or two top papers you had published exploring such kind of skill or such kind of method. Okay. So when you're able to mention one or two papers or maybe conferences you attended and you had the privilege to have presented in those conferences, being able to mention something like that. And a very, very superb thing aside from writing or creating a link is when you are able to state that you got a grant due to the novelty of your research. Like in my own case, I had the best research um, during my undergraduate in UI. So my supervisor had a collaborator in engineering who came to get some of my samples to use for his work. He, the guy was in food engineering. Okay. So something like that, when you write something like that, that, okay, you came up with this research, you did it this way, you got this result. It's not just of value in your field, but got value in another distance. And another department came to like get some of your samples, which helped them answer this one or two questions. Oh my God. Like chapter, um, the paragraph two should be brief, but you should know what you are putting there. It should either tell about your past experience, your past research, your research output, your research potential, or the skill you have, or the method you're coming up with, something like that. That is what the second paragraph is all about. And you should be able to identify some research areas in the professor's lab try to ensure that you are utilizing it when telling your story. Like for instance, the professor I worked with in China, if you want to discuss with such kind of person and with my professor in China, she's a very respectable professor. If you want to discuss with someone like her and you start adding things like bioactive compounds, biosurfactants, all those kind of things, and like you are seeing how you were able to 
utilize them, come up with methodology to detect surface tensions, or you have idea of coastal engineering, you, you have idea on some modeling, on some optimization models or codings or something like that. Okay, now you're communicating the language you understand. Okay, so there's a way you would put it, but in that, in that short paragraph, it should be known that you did something. It should be known that this is your interest. It should be known that this is how it links to him or her. Then the third paragraph, why you are not other people, is usually very short, like shorter than the paragraph one and two. Like the whole email should not even be more than one A4 paper, should not be more than one A4 paper. So the paragraph three should tell them about your productivity, like if they take you, it's not good, just going to be a value to you, but value to your country and even to them as well, that you look forward to joining their community. Just look for one or two things to show that you are not just a liability, you are also an asset, okay? That's the kind of content you would want to put in your third paragraph. Also let them know that in order for them to get more information about you, attached is your CV and uh, maybe your academic transcript. Okay, so in the conclusion part, wish them farewell by saying thank you for your time and consideration. Most of the time, people just put thanks. Please, thanks, like seriously. This professor, like I feel these people are too busy. Like my present location, the professor I'm working with, if you go to the lab, 2 a.m. is there. So this person left his or her busy work to open your email and all you could just put is thanks. Like, you know, there's something like, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time and understanding or consideration or something like that. That shows that, okay, this student is very appreciative of the time and the student knows that as a professor, it's not just her email I came to read in my office. I have other things doing, okay? It goes a long way, but it's so simple, less than a line. And it also tells them about how professional the student is. And it also makes them know if they can give you a space in their lab. A student that just puts thanks. As a professor will be thinking, no, oh, but this student is not a good student. Can this student work with my current students in the lab? The professor I'm working with right now, I could remember the day I had an interview with him. What he told me is that the way you smile, I know you will strive in my lab. I know you will do so well in my lab just by the way I smiled while answering these questions. All these things matters a lot. Ensure you work on your gestures in writing and in speaking, okay? After you had written your email, let's say in a Microsoft Word in one page, you need to go through your email, you need to review it. That first thing is just called draft, the first one. So when you want to review your email, you might want to do it by yourself. So I want to review my email. What I just need to do is distract myself. I had composed my email already in a Microsoft Word one page, right? So what I do is I could step out. Most of the schools I had studied in are close to Waterside, something like that. We have the Waterside. I can just walk down the Waterside or maybe walk around the field or maybe jog around or something just to lose some energy, just to lose out some energy. So when I come back to my email and then I read it like, okay, I'm a professor now. I want to judge myself. And then I start reading, okay, how does this sound? Do I sound polite? Is my information clear? Is it concise? Because I know I'm sending it to someone who does not have so much time. So all of this, I just check. And then I know, okay, it sounds okay. Maybe because I'm already used to it. So I could do it for myself, but I don't know about you. You might want to give it to friends, okay? So these are friends. This can give to this, and this can give to this. Please ignore the little baby. <laughs> ignore the cats. <laughs> so this can give to this, and this can give to this. And then we correct each other, okay? So you could also have a teacher, a mentor, like Mr. Stan, Mr. Chibi Kane, Mr. OB. You know, you might want to reach out to them. And now we have AI softwares that can also help you to ensure that you have your grammar in check, okay? And the plagiarism in check. So we have softwares you could explore in doing this. So documents you should attach while sending an email to a potential supervisor. You would want to either attach a resume or a CV. 
and then you attach a transcript or a certificate. But most importantly, is either a resume or a CV. Mr. Stan had already addressed this in the first part of this training, so you could go back to it in case you missed it. For the resume, most of the time, I tell people, it's people with little or no experience. Maybe you are a potential undergraduate student who want to travel abroad. The common thing you will have to showcase is a resume. It could just be like a little essay. It's easy for you to express yourself in a resume, but CV, it's very, very professional. So you just put the, the key points and then you tell them what is happening there. But in resume, you have the chance to explain responsibility, duties. I don't think you have all those space in CV to do that. And most of the time, resumes are just one page. Tell about your education background, some skills you have, it's quite simple, but in a CV, who would want to see things like published papers and all the rest of them? Who wants a resume? They just know that you don't have so much experience. Most of the time, it's undergraduates that use resume. For postgraduates, please, you should have a CV, okay? Transcript and certificates depend. It's not rigid. It depends. If you have a second-class upper, and maybe in your core course, or maybe the course of relevance, some professors will highlight in their page that they require a student with competence in this or proficiency in this, this, and this. So if you think that your transcript highlights those places and you had a very good score or a very good grade, you might want to attach your transcript. Or if you finish with a first class, please don't keep it. So I don't know what you're keeping it for. Attach it. <laughs> if they don't want to open, they should not open but one thing you wouldn't want to do is to bombard their email by sending your birth certificate. No, no, no. Don't go that far, please. Just this three and sometimes two or maybe just this one, please. Best timing for email. One thing you should know, if you want to send an email to me presently, I'm in Asia, please know my time zone. One interesting thing is Gmail, Outlook, I'm very sure of Outlook and Gmail. As of now, you could schedule an email to be sent at a time. When you're sleeping, the email goes. Okay, you don't have to wait. You know, during my time, I think it's just a new function. It's just a new function. During the time I was applying to China, I had to like set my alarm for the time the professors would be awake or something like that in order to send an email. But Gmail had made it easy. Outlook has also made it easy. You could just schedule your email. If you open Outlook, very close to the send icon, you will see something like a bar. Very close to the send, you will see something like a bar, similar to Gmail. Click on it, and then you're able to schedule the time you want to send the email. So you could be sleeping and enjoying in the dreamland when your email will go to the timing of the professor. Target a time that they just come to the office so that your email will be at the top and could be addressed first. A very good day and a good time is Mondays. Most times, Mondays, people are so active knowing that, oh, they want to get into one or two activities. So I come in as a professor on Monday. Okay, this is not a joking day, so I need to attend to things. But other days are very good as well. But please do well to send it in the morning. In the morning. Ensure that your email comes in at least 8 a.m. Okay, so it is at the top. There are different time zones for different places. You could always browse, okay, what is the time zone of this place? In North America, you should know that your neighboring country, just few countries away from your own state could be having different time zone. So not because you sent a professor in Georgia an email at a certain time, so you feel that every other part, maybe New York and the rest of them will be the same time. No, please check, browse on it, and then send in due time, please. Sometimes we send emails to professors and we notice that they didn't reply to our email. There's what they call follow-up. Follow-up is not bombardment. <laughs> Please, not you send an email today and then in the evening, you're like, uh-uh, what's wrong now? No reply. And then you forward it again. No, no, no. I tell people for follow-up, at least give the professor a week. Sometimes it could be that the professor is on a short leave or maybe he's on sick leave or something like that. So bombarding the person could be insensitive. Okay, just imagine I'm a professor and I took a sick leave. You are a candidate, you are an, a potential student, you don't know me, you don't know I'm sick, 
You don't know I took a sick leave. And then you sent an email today. And same today, you had sent the same email like four times. And then I came back from my sick leave and I'm trying to attend to. I just noticed that a particular person sends email. It's, it's the same email four times a day. It's a red flag. Okay. Nobody wants such kind of person in his or her life. So please, it's something you would look out for and would want to avoid. I would encourage if you want to send a gentle reminder, like after like a week, you can do so. And when you are sending your gentle reminder, you don't have to repeat the email. You could just follow up on that email. You greet the professor or you send all greeting, letting them know that you wish that this email meets them well, that you look forward to getting their feedback or something like that. Just something simple, a code, a gentle reminder. You don't have to copy and paste the same email and keep bombarding. No, just something that you have sent an email in these, 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 and you, would, you look forward to maybe applying for a scholarship, which deadline is coming up at this time. You would want to know if they have the space or would give you some time to look through your email. You hope to get replies. Some, just something very simple, okay? Just not even up to a paragraph, just something very simple. It's enough for a gentle reminder. Just follow up on your email. Like that email, you reply on it so that once they open it, they can see the email. If you are already a student, like you are now a student working with a professor, for those of you who will be joining some universities, I learned that Edofric already have students who got scholarships in US and other places. So you would want to put your subject line to be professional. But in this case, you are not a prospective student. You're not a potential student. So there's no need for that. The purpose of the email should be your subject line. Okay? And it's also good to retain the respect, okay? Most of the time, it's always good to retain the respect. Maybe with time, you'll just notice that everybody in the lab call the professor by the name, okay? Then you join with the flow. But I tell people, retain the respect, okay? Because when you come new, in my place, there's an adage that when a fowl gets to a new environment, it stands with one leg, Okay? One thing you should know is that the new students are trying to know your kind of personality. The professor is also trying to know your personality. So you wouldn't want to portray yourself as someone who is disrespectful and rude. So please, just retain being professional. But for the body of the letter, you could just, oh, good day, prof. How was your weekend? I hope great. Then the second paragraph, I look at this, this journal. I would like to give the journal club meeting on this subject. Please, I, would, I, I seek your approval. But one thing you should know is that you should be polite. At the end, thank you so much, professor. I hope to get your feedback. You should be polite. You should be polite, okay? In this case, you don't have to put sincerely. You know, if you are writing as a potential candidate, you have to write your full name. Sincerely, I'm going to do my chamaka, Linda. But when writing to your professor, warm regards, Linda, it's all right. This is just like a brief way to address your supervisor. You don't have to put your full name. But when writing as a potential student, please write your full name. Be professional. Bear in mind that you are not the only one emailing that same professor. A lot of you are doing so. So he or she would want someone that is professional. Because actually, the work is very professional. <laughs> That's why most of the time, they are judged by their write-ups, okay? And their quality of presentations, too. So they need candidates who are professional. And because it's the work of the students that promote professors. In summary, now we know about the content of an email, what to add and what not to add. We know about some documents we will need to attach to the email. Now we know about avenues we could explore or things we could explore to reviewing the email to be sure that it's checked, you know, and emailing and follow up. We know the best time to send our emails and we know how to go about the follow up of the email. And as we are doing it, we look forward to launching to our institutions of interest or making good records with the professors we are working with. You are more than enough, okay? Opportunities are like buses. There is always another one coming. Remember to pray. And MC Linda loves you so much. And I know you will do well. Okay. Thank you so much. I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Linda. You know, Edu Africa Scholars is a is a is a is an initiative uh, we brought up for to bring a high quality people like this. You see, I, I really enjoyed this and Linda, you are too much. That's the only thing that I can say. You are too much. Yeah. <laughs> because uh what we are looking for at Edu, we cannot bring uh, people who are half baked. We bring fully baked people to come and impact on young people in Africa. And uh, I'm very happy to, in fact, I learned a lot from this, to be honest with you, even though I am here, but I also learned something. And, uh, you know, I like the way you eventually that it brought in the other part of, because uh, this, um, from the audience, we know that some people who are in this program are not just uh, at, uh, applicants, but those who have already gotten funding already, who are already coming here. So they really want to know, because as we all know, one of the, in fact, the major uh, means of communication between students and lecturers or professors here is through email. Whether you are a GA, whether you are doing your work as a GA, or you want to send an email as a graduate assistant, everything you do, you work here with is email. And the way you write email, the way you write email shows how professional you are. I tell you something, when I came here, you know, before I used to say, dear professor, but when I came, there was something that Linda said, maintaining that respect. I try to maintain that even though I, when I came in, I discovered that uh, how they reply, how they write email here is hi. hi if, if the person is uh, Stanley, hi, hi, Stanley. A student will just write to a professor, hi, Stanley. But me, as an international student, I, I, I don't see it as the best way. So I always, I always maintain that, dear professor, whatever. If it is Stanley, probably dear professor Stanley, they are. I still maintain, even up till now, I'm still emailing them that way. It's, 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 it's in some cases that maybe I can, if it is not a professor, maybe it's uh, my, my advisor, I can say hi. But once he's a professor, I always try to maintain that. So I think uh, you really hit the nail on its head. So I would want to, this is time for questions. I think there are some questions in the chat box. And then this is time for questions, additions. Uh, I know that some some of our scholars in the background may have one or two things to chip in. So uh, it's time for contributions and questions. So what we'll do, what normally how we'll do it is that we'll first of all take uh, questions from people directly who raise their hands. And then we can also, we can, we'll now go to the chat box to look at the questions in the chat box. While we do that, we can also allow some um, scholars in the in the in the in the background to add if there is something that uh, was not captured. So I leave the floor open to scholars who are really willing to add to what we are doing. I think someone is raising up his hands. As so cool, as so cool, gospel. Okay, okay that's thank your you question. So much. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. Thank you, Linda, for the presentation. Uh, for the CV you talked about for those uh, um, graduate students with a BSc, I suppose, you said they should be very brief, that it should be in a resume form, and that should be one to two pages. I noticed that when I drafted my CV, though I'm a BSc graduate, I have like I had four pages, but I had to reduce it to three pages, but then I noticed I couldn't reduce it any further to make it very brief. That's number one. Number two, for, for male purposes, I also noticed that not everybody can review your mail, like, like people that are close to me, like my friends, because they might not have the technicalities to identify some of those nuances when it comes to professional mail. So I would like to appeal. Is there a platform where one can submit a co-mail for review before sending it to a professor? And those are my two questions. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much for the question. I would start and I also would encourage other scholars to assist me in answering the question. You know, I don't know, I don't know so much. I just know small. In short, I don't even know at all. <laughs> I'm just yeah, yeah. So please, for your first question, how can you minimize your CV? Resume are for people that you just finished your secondary school. So maybe you went for some computer training and some other kind of things and you're able to build up one or two skills. So that could help you come up with a resume. Resume is just for those set of people. For me, like for me, I feel once you have gotten to um, on the graduate level, think of CV, think of CV, try to build a CV. So resume is just to help secondary school students strive, maybe in search for job or something. So a good way to streamline your CV is trying to remove irrelevance. What are you applying for? And everything on your CV, do you want to tell me that all of them are relevant to what you're applying for? There are some voluntary activities that you just have to put the name of the organization and the year, even if you want to include it. You don't have to put the duties. There are some parts that you need to move the duties because they don't tell anything about your potential job or potential study, you're, what you're trying to apply for, you know, or maybe the, the research position. And again, even in a situation whereby you have a lot of publications, like I have a friend that have over a thousand publications. What he does is he just puts the first five that were published in maybe Nature or something like that, like the journals, like the outstanding journals in the, the academic world, in profiling of journals. I have my reservations, but nevertheless, it's a good thing if you have there. He just put like five to 10 of them and then he puts a link, like a Google Drive link or something containing all of the others. When you see those five, if you want more, you click on that link and it takes you there in the CV. These are creative ways to come up with a brief CV. There are some things that you don't have to bombard. You could put an active link on the CV. So when the person clicks it, it takes the person to the place. If you feel that there are some things you would want to describe because they will give you higher chances of getting the job, you could summarize it that way by just putting an active link. Okay? That's, a, that's one of the creative ways I have devised to making the CV look small. I have tried it and it worked for me. So, yeah, like putting active links. Someone else to help in answer the question. Thank you. Well, I think you have really addressed the question and it, uh, it doesn't need much this thing. You will summarize it by saying resume, resume is for uh, undergrads. I mean, those who have just finished secondary school, why CV should be so it's 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 a, it's it has been addressed um i think okay the second uh, he asked the second question what was that your second question I super okay the second question um was um review of cv I said before some of our colleagues like friends might not have the technicality technicalities to understand what are the things one is supposed to leave there and some of the things one is supposed to review, uh, remove. So in that case, are there, is there a platform where one can submit um, mail before for review before submitting to the prospective uh, prof? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I think, uh, okay, she addressed it in, in, in her presentation. She said you can send to one or two persons to review for you. In that uh, situation, that in that regard, I think in one or two occasions, uh, uh, I have tried and myself, even uh, good luck, my colleague, uh, we have tried to review uh, people's uh, emails and uh, uh, SOPs. So, well, I don't want to, we don't, I don't want to make it so, uh, give it out, say, does be submitting because if I do that, I know the, the last time I did that, people people almost finished me. I I I requested I I I decided to, I decided to do a giveaway uh, to review twenty persons, twenty SOPs. I think that was in December when we were a little bit free, we were on holidays. So I decided to use that time to look at people's uh, uh, SOPs and then uh, make uh, corrections and uh, review it. I said 20 and my email, I, I think I had more than 50. 
So it's it's although I tried as much as I could to address all of them, but so but well, what will happen is that based on that, if you have something, you can uh, probably uh, chat me or chat or any of any of the colleague any of my colleagues. Uh, you can see Linda's uh, social media platforms. So it's true, you can get us through our social media platforms. You can see Linda's own, you can see my own, you can see Good Luck's own, Obina's own, uh, Stanley, every, all the scholars that I've been bringing here, hold them tight. They can do it for you. Hold them. <laughs> if you want to communicate with me, please, we'll come to this search gate if it's urgent. But if it's not urgent, you could just drop it any other place. Yeah, you have you have heard it. So you, you can see you can just take her num name from there and then trace her on research gate. I also published her research uh, gate um link in Edu Free Scholars uh, WhatsApp group chat. So you can also link up with her to that place, and you will also see some of her citations, some of her uh, publications there. So those those things are what why we are bringing you guys, why we are bringing you guys here, to connect you guys to scholars who can help you. Why I uh, I try to bring some of these people is because I don't know it all. And what is happening, I'm, I'm, I'm only in the United States. I am not in UK. I am not in Australia. I am not in Australia. I'm not in Canada. I'm not in all the countries of the world. So but some of these scholars are from these countries and they know what is happening their own way. So if, you're if you want to send such email, you uh, most times you also try to let the, the person you are sending the email to, they kind of give the person a kind of background of the person, the, the, the school you are sending it to. So that because I've always said this, whenever you are sending me your SOP something or something like that, try to let me know a little bit about the school. You know, apart from the SOP, just in the email that you, you are using to send it, try to give me a kind of background about the school and so that will give me a, a better this thing to uh, 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 to review it well. So um, we are going to talk uh, talk more about SOP and all that in the next two weeks. I think uh, good luck will handle that one. So um, in the chat box, okay, there was someone else raising up his hands. I don't know. Is Okonkwo somebody? I don't know if he's still raising up his hand. But while we are waiting for him, I think we can look at the questions in the chat box. Um, we have okay. Someone said request for PhD supervisor for 2024. So we should be including what pros what the word prospective student in our mail to professor. Right? The person is asking if we should be including the word prospective student in our mail to professor. In the subject. Okay. Okay. In the subject. Is an incoming student. Some professors already know at the back of their mind that they don't need students. If you put that, it helps them know that, oh, this is an incoming student. And then they reply and tell you, oh, I'm very sorry. I don't have funding. I won't be taking students. That gives you closure. But when they don't reply, sometimes it's because the subject is misleading. They don't know who you are. They don't know what you are mailing for. They don't even have time to read your email. And then it turns to a junk. They just leave it there. For me, I tell people your subjects could make you get what you want. Yes, very important. Another very important thing when you are writing your subject, please, I observed this from the people that are sending me mails. Please write it in small letters. Don't capitalize it. I I learned this, I learned this sometime in the past. You know, one of my professors that I sent a mail. He, 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 you know, you know, some of these things we were not, nobody taught us all these things in the university. So we just came out and we started applying. So in fact, some of us learned it in a, in a hard way. I must confess. So I sent a mail to a professor. She replied, she started replying by saying, hi, Stanley. I must say your mail is shouting. She saw the, because I, I, I the, the subject, I wrote it in capital letter. So she replied and said, you are shouting in your subject before she now started addressing, <laughs> addressing my question. So, you know, I, I, I learned it. I learned it in a hard way. So this is, this is a very important. So just put it in, in small letters. 
something like that. So um, we have uh, other questions. Okay, this one says, um, but how, how about when you write a catchy subject like subject line like with less than 500 words? Uh, subject line with less than 500 words. Let me understand. He said, how about when you write a catchy subject line with less than 500 words in the body of the of the mail? Yet, no response, even after sending reminder. What can one do differently to get response from good mails? That is, she's trying to say after she has written the mail first time, Nobody responded. She sent a, a reminder. Nobody responded. What would be the next line of action? In my own Linda style, in the MC Linda style, what is your social media for? This professor is not working alone. Okay? Go to his or her paper. Look for one or two names there. Go and look for the person on social media. You could be favored, and then you get a very beautiful soul to discuss with. And then you tell the person, oh, I want to work in your lab. I emailed your professor. I didn't get response. Like in my case, the professor I'm working with at the time, I see him every week. Even the place I like to take my lunch, that is where he likes to take his lunch too. So I, sometimes I see him in a week every day because I could be eating and then I just look close to me. He came to sit on my table. I'm like, oh, oh, oh my God, why? <laughs> so it's just that way. If we're eating, we're having lunch, we are not in the office. So I can keep in that, that the person told me he, he sent an email to you on this particular day. I think you might be busy. Maybe that's why you didn't check. Maybe if you could check, I think the person is good. When he goes back, he might, oh, I think that said something. Let me look at this person. So if he wants you, he will reply. If it, You don't know that it's just simply because he discussed with me. I could remember a girl who wanted to work with my supervisor in China. And that was how she contacted me on LinkedIn. And then I told my, she said my professor did not reply her email. And I was like, eh? my prof in China is actually a very sweet soul. She's so beautiful. Like, she's so sweet. I was like, really? She ignored? If she doesn't want, she'll tell you. She's very, very sweet. Very, very, very beautiful. I was like, oh, okay, there's no problem. So I was heading for dinner. And then she was riding a bicycle outside the school. And then we just met. And I, oh, prof. And then I told her. She, she replied her. So you could utilize your social media, not just for the normal um, chatting and laughing out. You could also utilize it in solving problems of this kind, okay? Especially first author, second author, and third author. Be careful not to message a professor to go and message another professor. Yeah, this is very important. There was somebody I was, <laughs> I was mentoring privately. That's, we are talking on private chat. Me and him, we this issue came up. It was like he 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 um he emailed the other professor. Please, can you follow up on what I discussed with the other professor? You know, that thing is you don't you don't connect whatever you are doing with Professor A to end with Professor A. Don't connect Professor A to Professor B. So it could be a clash of you could eventually have a clash of interest yeah which might not end up end up well with you so another question here is uh, says please can one code mail that is can one can one please uh, this code mail is 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 just a slang not uh, so but we can just accept it anyway uh, can one code mail a professor even if they didn't advertise in their lab group. Definitely. I, I did mention of it that the thing you see on, on their web page is outdated. Okay. Some of them already believe that students will always email them at a certain month so they will surely get students. Why some of them already like have a certain expectation and then they email some professors and tell them that if they have students who are rounding up and would want to maybe like it, okay, let me put for instance, where I'm working at this time, where I'm working presently, like every week we receive adverts of postdoc or PhD, but it is like a confined email stating that the person must have finished from the lab I am working now. This is simply because the professor, maybe in Germany or US or Australia, is also using 
have the same kind of equipment or have similar research interests with my professor. So he wouldn't want a JJC. You know what I'm saying, right? He wants someone who is already experienced, not someone that will come and then they start teaching you everything from the beginning. And sometimes these professors, you just email them by yourself. You never can tell. You know, it's just like me drifting from microbiology to ocean engineering. The professor I worked with in China, the first email I sent to her, her response to me was an acceptance letter. So you see, <laughs> you, you never can tell. She didn't advertise anything. The first email I sent to show my interest, her reply was an acceptance letter. Like admission letter. That was what she said for me as a reply so that was what i used in backing up my scholarship application of which if you have that it is like 75 percent guarantee of getting the cs scholarship so even without applying like there's this green light already showing just because she replied in that manner such kind yeah. of person who gave me such reply shows that even if they called a meeting she would speak on my behalf she wants me do you oh, get yeah. please send email you don't have to to wait for them to advertise. Yeah, so another question says, do you send a mail before getting an admission or after an admission? Well, it depends. Um, but the most effective time of sending is before your admission. That's great, but that is the most needed time. Like that is when it is most important. If you already got an admission, no problem. When you come into the school, you go to the graduate school to do your registration. If you don't have a supervisor, they could merge you with someone, depending on what you told them, you have maybe your background or your interest. They could always fix you with someone or before applying, if you want to be very sure that the person you are eyeing is truly what it is. There are some people that when they reply you in email, you already know that this professor is, is strict, is disciplined, just by the way the email will be standing. Emails are sent all the time. I send email every day. I reply to emails every day, okay? As a student, like in my school presently, your email should always be on because every slight thing, even to come and pick up something from downstairs, you'll see somebody sending you an email. So it's a very common means of communication when you're inside the school. But when you're emailing a professor, it is most important before going because you want to know the professor. You want to be sure that this professor is a good match to you if a professor replies to you and there's a professor that I rejected, like only by reading the reply, <laughs> I just sent an email that, please, I don't think we're a good match. <laughs> so so is it, it's possible that even you can even send him a breakfast email. Even a student can send the professor a breakfast email the same way they send us. That was because of how... Oh, I would not say he or she, but that was because of the language the person used in replying my email. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Some of them can be horrible. As though I'm not coming to add anything. Exactly. It's, toxic, but it's going to be a toxic combination. I, yeah. I love to respect people, and at the same time, I love people to respect me. Okay? Exactly. Even if I'm, small, even if I'm a small girl, but at least there's this bit of respect everybody deserves. Even a newborn baby deserves some, some respect. When you carry them, exactly. you call them, don't carry any harm. You don't hold a yeah. newborn baby on your leg. You know? <laughs> so I, I think everybody has this little rest. Just that small. You don't talk. Aye, don't talk little little courtesy. Little courtesy. Yeah. So I just yeah. sent her in and I told her, oh, I'm not saying her. Okay, you, you can never know the person. So I just replied. Re by the email and I just like oh I don't think we I don't think we good fit. Thank you so much for your time and that was it. Yeah. Yeah, that's yes. What you said is you know that we 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 have we experienced such things. You know, a student have come to there was a there was a time one email flew went viral of a response of a professor to I think that should that could be a Nigerian. That, that that professor responded to it was so 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 awful he was so raw he was so so unpleasant in the email you know that i, I noticed that those those of you from nigeria i don't know how what you do in your gre that your gre is not standard is not standard is you know the person the, the if you if you read the response of that professor you see that you see you just see a pure 
uh, example of a racist. So we it's, it's part of what we are experiencing. And uh, I must tell you guys, applicants, and those that are not applicants, that those that are coming here, just be open to such things and then try to oh, work on yourself to find a way to manage those things because they are real. They are real, yeah. but not every professor. Not anyway. everywhere. Not everywhere. I'm telling you, some professors are sweet. Some yeah. professors are nice. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. My professor, where I finished, when I was, I'm not supposed to say this because I know this is a public stuff, but she celebrated me not once, not twice, not three times after my graduation. Yeah. Some of them are that nice. Like you come into their office and they clear seats and they're like, oh, please have a seat. And yeah, they treat yeah. you like as if you are coming with contracts for them. Exactly. Some they of them are nice. Like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Some of them so, are nice. So that's, that's simply because you respect yourself, right? In order to get it back. You have to respect yourself so they respect you. Yeah. Can you hear me, please? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so first of all, um, I want to thank Linda, who I call Linda Cassie, in a very special way, <laughs> <laughs> for this very informative presentation she just gave to all of us. I mean, I am a graduate student, and I would tell you confidently that I learned a lot from this presentation. Linda has been there. She has done that. She has gotten so many offers from very high-ranked institutions. So whatever she tells you, you can count on that. So someone um, said something that made me want to make this comment. So someone was asking, I think, questions about how to know if a professor um, has an opening. Now that made me say this i mean some of these professors are very vibrant on linkedin and even twitter okay and i have seen a couple of posts from professors um, looking for graduate students who can work in their labs on linkedin okay and some of them also talk about their research and all of that so one thing you could do is you could start to engage with some of these professors posts maybe you want to apply to a school and you have seen some of the professors you like, you could just check their LinkedIn profile to see if they talk about their research or what they do on their LinkedIn. You can try to engage on their posts, okay? So that is actually a very valid way for you to show that you have interest in what they do. Because every student who emailed them said the same thing. I love your research. I have read your research. They know that most of you are not reading their research, okay? They know all of this. But when you engage with their social media posts, that gives you a higher level of credibility when you say that you like their research. So you could actually follow their social media posts and that will also help you to see if they have any kind of job opening, okay? So that's what I wanted to say. And like I said, Linda here has given you guys a very thorough lecture and I have very little to add to it. So, I mean, I think you guys are good to go in this aspect. Definitely, definitely, they are very good to go. If if I were if I were to be an applicant after after this lecture, I, I I must confess I will write like fifty emails within this weekend from what I have learned here. Yeah, she has really uh, dealt with this, and you know, like I like I said, this is not just for applicants, but for us also who are already. I'm seeing the people that are coming here in August as part of us already. Because from now on till you finish your program here, email is a major uh, form of communication here. And uh, constant check of your... See, the way I do here, every morning I wake up, every morning, the first thing I do before I even go to my social media platform, probably is to go to my email, my student email. Because uh, sometimes there could be a message from your professor that would want you to maybe have a meeting with him by 10 a.m. or, or 9 a.m. that morning. And you, you, you didn't read your mail and it, it comes, it, it, they will see you as an irresponsible student. So checking your email on a daily basis is very, 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 very important. And someone asks if this um, 
this lecture slide will be made available on the on the group platform. Yes, I think Glinda, you will do us a favor, you send so that we will publish on our group platform for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. So it will be made available on the WhatsApp uh, group chat later today. Uh, good everyone, please. Can I ask a question? Oh, yeah, go ahead, Marcel. I think that will be the last person we will tweet before we wrap it up. Good evening, can you hear me, everyone? Yes. Oh, sorry. I'm just um, joining cut and join because of the technical uh, network glitches I'm having here. Please, I want to really ask quickly, though, uh, three of my questions, two have been uh, taken care of already. So, for the last one, please, I want to uh, know, or maybe for you to throw more light. Now, in getting a uh, professor, is it from the school um, website or uh, majorly from the LinkedIn? Because most of us um, might not actually know who is who there in the in the social media uh, space um, so i was thinking if we, we, we could get them from the school uh, portal and mostly some schools doesn't even um, make provisions for those uh, professors or those uh, supervisors that are going to be working with just like uh, the only school that or mostly the schools that have a start is in only, in only in asia so i don't know if us and other schools actually make provision of um uh, professors are going to be working with and with their email address detailed on their website. So I just want us to maybe uh, highlight more on this, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for the question. I have had privilege to maybe work, interact or something with professors in US, Germany, um, or maybe meet in conferences, connect and still discuss later Australia, all those kind of things. And I will tell you, all of them they have their contact and their information on the school website. So the thing is, because of time, I might have said, let me take you through some websites quick in US and some places and you just see how I'm able to go down to their profile. So, but there is no time for that. But let me just tell you one thing you should look out for. Let's say in China, you would see professor, right? Let's say US, you will see faculty. You wouldn't see professor. Click on faculty. Most people ignore when they see faculty, they just think, oh, Nigeria setting. Faculty means maybe faculty of science or so. No. They will not write faculty member, they just write faculty. Click on it. You will see the directory there. They could put something like an icon in the web page of a department. And what they just put there is academic staff or something like that. You have to navigate through that icon to get to the professor's profile, to then see the different professors in that uh, maybe institute or so. The person that asks the question, what university have you tried? Let me just put it on phone and then I tell you what to keep clicking on your phone. Okay, I've, I've checked um, Auckland Universities in US. Okay, you have checked Auckland University in the US. Browse on Auckland University and click the icon that comes out if you open yeah. it you will see things like academic, see things like financial aid future students students life healthy campus faculty click on faculty that's what i'm telling you about so faculty affairs and the rest of them you see then under that you see teaching and learning faculties you see research and scholarship and the rest of them then you see our faculty click on our faculty now it takes you to, to the department, the different departments in that institution. So what department are you applying for? Or what department do, would you like to apply for? Yes, I'm applying in the department of um, electronics engineering. Electronics engineering, that's School of Engineering and Computer Sciences. Click on it. Okay. If you click on it, you will see directories. Once you click on that, if you are following what I just said now, you click on directories. Once you click on directories, you say you are, that you are applying for where? Mechanical engineering? Electrical. Electrical. Okay, electrical and computer engineering. I can see it on my screen right now. So click on it. Yeah. Now you will see the names of the professor. The first person that was, you see the different professors in that department. The first person that okay. was mentioned is the professor and chairhead of the department. 
department. Now, have you seen how to navigate? Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's a pride to them, you know. So the only thing is that sometimes some students don't know how to assess these things, but they're just there. Now, have you okay. seen that it's possible? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you so much. I'd love to be practical. Yeah, so. Don't <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> any other yeah. questions? Yeah, you see, you see, yeah, it's good for us. That's why sometimes try some of these programs so that uh, uh, we'll be able to do some of these particles and show them how to navigate some of these things. I don't know why I'm having echo. Okay, so um, I think uh, we've really dealt with a lot of uh, good topics here, and I think we've almost, in fact, we've exhausted all the questions we have in the in the chat box. And then I'll provide some people we are asking how they can join the WhatsApp group chat. I have provided a link for you to join the WhatsApp. It's not, it's not a link for you to join. It's a link for you to apply. You know, I always make this open. We are not looking for crowd. I'm very happy that the little people, the, the people we are managing, and the, the, the number of people that are following us, uh, we are having testimonies every, every day. Every week, there is... By God's grace, since for the past, because most of the interviews are always between uh, March, April, May, June, July. So between, from April till now, we have been receiving a whole lot of um, testimonies of people getting their visa. And that is what we want. And I will tell you so far, so good. All the people that have gotten their visa, I, I, they are, I can vouch for them. They are very strong candidates who are going to make a lot of impact in both their home country and their host country. And in fact, so far, they, 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 they align with what uh, Edu Africa Scholar stands for. So we are looking for few persons. We're not looking for crowd. We're not, we're not like all these people that will just, when they, when they move out, they will create some group and then start misleading people telling people if you come to this country everything you want is here it is we, we don't we, we are not we are not here to impress people we are here to guide you and guide you properly so that's why we created this this very group chat for people i mean this very link for people to you have to apply and in the application you are have to have to write a letter of i'm only interested in that letter of intent 100 to 150 words. I read it. I, I read it. And most times my colleague, Chibike, he reads. So after reading, he recommends, he will tell me, let's take this people, let's take this people. And then I each time any people, anybody he recommends, I take. Because we not like last week, we I got like almost 20 something applications. But out of that 20 something, I didn't, I don't accept that up to 10. Because they were all, I don't know, they were all writing to fill the gap, but they, to fill the page, but they're not actually writing. I, I didn't see the intent in them. So that's why I didn't accept. So I'm sorry if you have shared this link with your friend and your friend was not actually added. Know that the person did not meet the criteria to be added in that group chat. We are very sure, serious about that. And we are, in fact, we are even working on, on process of reducing people in the group chat. So if we see that you are not, you are just there with the, that, that magic bar mindset, you are not there to contribute to nation building. We can just uh, quietly remove you. So please, if you want to join our group chat, click on that link, fill the form, be very serious in, the, in your letter. Don't just write to fill. Uh, the, the letter stated what you should write. So read it well, write well, and we will look at it. And if, we, if, we are, if you are good, we we'll bring you in. Because we also, in as much as you are coming there, you're also coming there to share some, not, not, not just to collect, but also to share with us. I've, I've seen recently, some people are even making posts, you know, sharing their own experiences, sharing what, uh, sharing some links that are useful. You know, these are the things, these are the, these are the people who are serious, who are serious in the field of scholarship application, not people who just want to jabba. So we don't, we don't encourage that. So, um, I think uh, Stanley made a okay. My guy Stanley Stanley uh, wrote something here. Let me read it. He said, in addition to the brilliant presentation of Linda, I will advise applicants to be active on LinkedIn and follow most professors 
an articulating contribution of their posts can earn you a relationship with them, thereby opening doors for further conversation. Exactly. Following them on, in fact, most of the, of the people that have joined our group or most of the people that I have helped so far, I connected with them. I don't even know them personally. As in, I don't know them personally. I connected with them on LinkedIn. And I see most of, because each time I make any post, the people comment. So, either on LinkedIn, Facebook, or any other of my social media platforms. And I use myself as an example. This is the same way professors uh, value their social media posts. So whenever they make any posts today, if you're following them, you try to be articulated, you try to be, your comments there makes them to know you. Follow them up. One of, those, one of that guy, that guy that's, that got admission that arrived in U.S. last month, uh, Victor, I don't know him. Like I say, I always tell people, I don't know him personally, but he followed me from Facebook since last year. He started following me, following, bombarding my letter came to my DM and all that. And today he's in US. So this is how it is done. If you see them, follow them. Then he said, second, always post things concerning your area of specialization on your LinkedIn and put up some questions that can attract responses. Exactly. Content creation. Content creation helps you a lot to sell yourself. You, if, you are, if, you are, if you are A and you are posting something about B, I don't know. This, this takes me to some people that are young people that are managing. I don't know what you are doing with your social media platforms. The social media platform is where you sell yourself. You don't just be posting. Maybe you see one naked picture you post, you see this, you, it, it, it doesn't make sense. You should be posting on your social media platform. is content, something that will attract people to you. Something that will attract people that are not just any helpers. Because whatever, I always tell people that what you post on your social media, to an extent, that means the kind of person you are. I, I, as I am now, most times when I go to, to my WhatsApp um, uh, list, there are some people I don't read their 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 their, was, their WhatsApp updates, status updates. Uh, there are some people because they don't they are not posting something that is useful. Most times they will post they are posting rubbish. I don't have time to. In fact, I don't even have time to to look at nonsense. So, but there are some people that once I enter my WhatsApp, I will just go straight. Just go and search their name. I'll just go to search, type their name so that their name will come up. I will just read their WhatsApp uh, updates. I, I, let me promote one guy here now, uh, Chooks. Chooks, I read his. Chooks is one of the guys that I mentor so much, and he is coming here at NIU very soon. I, the guy, I like his how he articulates his points. So, some of these these people, before I read your post, I will know whether you are creating a good content. So, if you are making something that is good, it will attract them. I'm surprised to even see that my department chair here in NIU one day commented on one of my posts on LinkedIn. And I was so happy that my department chair commented on my social media platform. So that's because I, I made, I made, I'm making content that is attracting them. So if you are making content that is not attracting them, they will not mind you. That's why in, even in the US, uh, this US always asks for your social media platform. I mean, when you are filling your DS-160, they report for your social media platform. Do you think they report for it for, for nothing? They report for it to compare what you are doing online with what you are saying that you are coming to US to do. So I always advise people, if you don't have good content, don't, don't even try to have a social media platform. There is this guy, Emmanuel Ndoka. Yeah, he's on, he's the guy is a young boy like that. I, I read his story starting from when he, he started. He's a mentee, a mentee of... Um, uh, Tony Lumelu, just a young guy who just made small posts on, I think, how his, how his story started was just, he, he, he took his picture where he was wearing a suit with red tie and a white shirt, the same way Tony Lumelu dresses. And he brought his picture and merged his picture with uh, Tony Lumelu's picture and made some little content he made there and tagged Tony Lumelu on that post. That was how this guy became a star today. Just that thing he did. And 
uh, people that are handling the social media, Tony, Tony Lumelu emailed, sent him message directly. You guys from Nigeria will know who I'm talking about. When I, uh, uh, Tony Lumelu, he's a, he's a uh, CEO of this uh, UBA, but UBA. So today, that guy has over how many, they are calling him different places to come and deal. A young boy of, an undergraduate, he has not even graduated. So this is what we are talking about. Now he's a star. They are, they are inviting him to come and speak. He would, he is, he, he, there was, sometimes I used to, when I have time to look at his, some of his posts, I see when he posts, the first time he, he, he entered flight in his life, the first time he was able to lodge in a hotel and all those things. The guy, the guy is so, because of the kind of good content he's creating on LinkedIn, he's now, he even won the, 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 the best, I mean, is it the, the uh, most uh, active uh, person on LinkedIn? I think in 2022 or so, I, I think there was something he wanted. I'm not actually following him fully because I have a lot of things that I'm doing. So, but this guy, I saw him. He's he's just a young boy, a young person like some of some of you guys that are that are coming up. So try to create something that is good, so that you will attract these people to you. That is just our general advice. And um, I think uh, at this point, um, I will invite uh, before we close. I will invite um, choose. Okay, someone is still using his. I think we are we are okay. iPhone, uh, iPhone, yeah. Uh, the last question, because um, I think we, I always want to have this program ended in two hours. So, the last question, the person raising his hands, ask your question fast, fast. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes I, I'm sorry that my name is iPhone because I joined the conversation uh, somewhere in the middle of, just at the end of the list, and I was so busy, so I joined later. That's why I didn't put my name. Um. Uh, um, Senior Stanley, I, I just want to thank you very much because uh, I didn't get this opportunity. You have mentored me at least a bit somewhere last year. I, I'm not asking a question. I just want to put something up across for every other participant on this platform. Yeah, my name is, yes, my name is Taufik. I'm from Ghana. And then uh, I'm currently in Portugal. And then uh, I am studying a master's in biotechnology in uh, one of the universities in Portugal, that's the uh, University of IPV, uh, Institute of Polytechnic Institute of uh, wow. uh, Portugal. Yes, I started talking to you last year and I sent you, um, the, my first contact was on LinkedIn. That's where I, I found you. And, uh, and I sent you an email and you quickly re responded. To, I sent you a message on, um, on LinkedIn and you, you, you responded to me. And then I told you that I had um, an SOP for a review. So you said, oh, well, that's fine. You can send it to me. And then you sent me your email and I delivered my SOP. You read my SOP and you were like, oh, that's excellent. But the only thing I can say is I feel that it's a little bit uh, generic when it comes to your, what you want to do in future. Because and what you, you, the advice you gave me was very informative. I went back to read my SOP and then I realized that... Uh, Actually, I was, uh, I was a bit generic about what I wanted to do in future. So um, I just rescheduled it. I looked at it once again, and I put it in the right order. But I felt that you were so busy that I didn't want to disturb you more. So right now, um, last year, when I was talking to you, I was uh, thinking to come to the United States. But uh, along the line, I got admission in Portugal, and it wasn't on a, on a scholarship base. But when I arrived in the, when I arrived in Portugal, there was this scholarship that was advertised on the school platform. And then with the advice that you gave me, um, I applied, I used all the tactics, whatever you, you, the, you told me, and I rescheduled my, uh, my SOP. And uh, trust me, when, 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 when they did the vetting, <laughs> I think nobody even got half of what I, I got. The wow. max that yes, no one got, <laughs> no one got that max uh, among uh, all the, the 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 applicants. So right now I am a, I'm a research assistant here in my department, and uh, I am already doing my masters. And now I want to do my PhD in the United States. That's why I, I am on this platform. 
I saw that I saw it on your yeah. LinkedIn profile yeah. talking about this, and I follow you every day, and so I know whatever you you do. I'm just using this opportunity to say that to 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 talk to other part applicants to tell them that they should just listen to all that you guys are saying because it's very very important. I am yeah. already here, but I still need more information. No one is perfect. Yeah. You yes yeah. you you. We, we, we are here to teach each other and to learn from each other. That's like you said before. So I, I was very happy. That's why I raised my hand. I decided not to talk, but because you said this platform is for learning and sharing. That's yeah. why, I, yeah. So it's very, very important. And thank you very much. This is what I yeah. have to say. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I can't really remember you. You know, a lot of people contact me on LinkedIn. And most, you see, most times, because I don't know a lot, a lot of people, sometimes somebody will just come, ah, hell, I'm very happy. Thank you, sir, so much, so much. I, I want this. I can't even remember when I helped that person. So this is something that I get on a daily basis, people with giving testimonies and all that. And uh, I'm happy for that. I can't even remember all this conversation, but it's good that you bring it up. So please, kindly uh, send me a message on LinkedIn again so that we can connect uh, further on on, on, on your on your ambition to come to us so okay, can, see that. I, I would do that can, i would do that yeah don't send me okay. a mail or a message on LinkedIn. and then so, linda thank you very much for the wonderful presentation it was indeed helpful thank you very much and all the other uh people on the platform or oh, we are waiting yeah. to see more and every each and every week we'll be here to listen to you guys thank you very much for yes this you, Yes, we still have next week. Uh, I, it's not easy coming for this program, but we are. I just, I just pray that we con we conclude it. I was even asking myself, am I? Are you still? Are you sure I'm going to be available for this whole, for this whole program? But I will try. Next week we still have uh, data analysis uh, presentation by one of the one of the strongest data analysts. You know, I, like I always tell you guys, I cannot bring any help person here because what we are doing here is a very serious thing. I can't. Look at we have been here for over two hours. Do you know how much is an hour? When I when I worked in one one uh, on campus job here, I was getting thirteen dollars per hour. So this thing that I, I'm I'm sitting here now, two hours twenty six dollars. I have wasted twenty six dollars, yeah, and none of you is giving it back to me. No 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 no. It's not it's not a problem. It's not an issue. So. So we we sat here for two hours, you know, trying to, and I can't just bring out my two hours and waste it. Here, we, there, is, there is a general language, and even in, in Nigeria, we say time na money. In this country, time na money. There was this this guy that came into US recently. Was it uh, Victor that came into this room? Uh, our mentorship. Since he came to US, <laughs> you know, he, he the other day I was talking with him on phone. He said. The kind of messages he gets, he was asking me, ah, sir, how do you even do this? I don't know. I have never, if any time I come back, I will see 50 messages. I don't, how do you respond to all these things? I told him, no problem. That is, that is, that is, that is what we, that is what we do. Here, yeah, most times, whenever I come, I come, because I'm always online anyway, but whenever I'm ready to respond to social media platforms, I mean, social media messages, if I, I take almost two to three hours, sometimes if I sleep, I'll just take time to go through those messages. That's why I always tell people, if you want to send me a message, go straight to the point. Don't come and say hi. Those hi and hello, there's no time for me to, okay, what, what do you want me to do? To come and say uh -huh, hello, and you know, just, you can say hi, whatever, any pleasant, any greeting you want to greet, whatever, just greet and then type, do all the typing. Don't just type hi and go home and be waiting for me to come and say hello. I may not even have time to say hello. I've always told you guys that. So, so that when I, whenever I come, I reply to those messages. If it is something that requires requires further discussion, I can tell you, okay, let's let's have a meeting so 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 time. If it's something I can fix in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you, I can say, okay, let's have a meeting at this time. Looking at my schedule. So that is how we work here. It's not easy here. Com com you know, combining our GA work, our academic work our work and other things. And with these social media things we are doing, this um, volunteering work we are doing, it is not easy on us. I know what I suffered before I was able to bring Linda here. She will come. 
Linda is a very, very this is this time now that she's here now is her midnight. This is this should be around 2 a.m. in her in her place. And she's here, live and direct, talking. Here we are. This is in US now, it's just around past 12. We I, I you started by 10, and this is around 12. It's still early morning, a.m. But in her place, it is midnight. And this is how some of us, like some of some other people, like good luck and other, this is their night. And they are all here. So it's not easy to bring these people here. So we pray that uh, nothing will come up that will make a speaker. Each time I each look, getting closer to the days, I always bombard the speakers with uh, messages. Are you still going to be, be there? Are you still going to be there? You know, it's not easy. I have organized a lot of uh, programs in the past. I've organized conferences. And I know how, how difficult it is. Trying to, when you, whenever you invite a guest speaker, like when I organized a conference, when I was in Nigeria, I was a, a, a conference we organized under CIPM. I was the publicity secretary of that committee. Or more, they gave me to, I'm the one that will invite a lot of guest speakers. The way every day I send mail to guest speakers, please, are you still, do you still remember? You know, I just a kind of reminder, you know, it's not easy, it's not easy. When you organize a program like this, trying to follow up with the speakers, because sometimes a speaker that can even a day to the program tell you, oh, I'm sorry, something came up, oh, this and that. And what, what can you do at that point? So that's why it is always, it's always uh, good to follow them up. So I was going to follow up with the rest of the speakers. We still have three more speakers for the three weeks remaining. The next week, the upper week, and the last week will be on 8th of July. I hope we, God will keep us. Then after then, we will rest and then plan on what next to do because uh, from time to time, we will be engaging you guys on one thing or the other that will enlighten you guys, that will also help the society. I'm, I'm happy that, uh, 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 like I told, you, I told you, the Ghanaian guy, please connect with me um, at a point because I, I, why we, when, when people travel out, we, have, we will know that this person has met some kind of... Uh, uh, has experienced some kind of exposure. So we try to uh, bring them in to share their own experience. I'm happy that someone from that your area now, Portugal, is, is here. We can also know what's happening in Portugal. Yeah, so we are looking forward to, I have, we have someone already that we helped. Uh, he's a Ugandan, and uh, I think he's currently, he's traveling now to, I think um, he's traveling to um, Austria. Or what? Then I still I think have some other person, a guy that I connected with recently. He connected with me on LinkedIn. He's, he's traveling. He got a SI, a Swedish Institute a Scholarship. I don't know if you guys know about it. He's traveling to Sweden. He's doing his papers now, and he's not even. In a, I think he's a Rwandan or so. I, don't, I can't remember that his country. So and I have talked with him. I told him that I, I'm going to bring him one of these days to share. So why I'm bringing these people here is to share their own experience how they got to where they are, how you can do it to get to where they are. And boom, you are there. So thank you, everyone. So I want to, I, I'm not the one that will do the vote of thanks. I want to bring on board um, one, of, one of my bosses. You know, whenever I, I help somebody to come up, I will see the person as a boss. So Juice, you have the floor. Uh, do the vote of thanks. So Pascal and Asubo, you have something. Linda, we are, Linda has a gift for you guys. Thank you for asking my question. So we will be giving you back the airtime you use in thank for this program. Thank you. So I hope you give me my own. <laughs> That's for organizer. <laughs> uh, okay, so Pascal and Asuko, I don't know, Asuko connects with me on LinkedIn. I don't know where you connected with me. Just connect with me anywhere so that you can get your gift. Connect. I don't know Pascal knows how to connect with me. You can give you your gift. Linda, thank you so much for the gift. Thank you, thank you. That's nice. I wish the next person that will speak next week will give more gift. Oh, please don't expect it from speakers. It's not easy for us, okay? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. It's not. No, no, no. no we are not there. So that when they listen, they listen actively. Because being yeah. able to ask is because you listen it's actively. Us, so yeah, you. yeah, yeah. All right. Choose. You have the floor now.
Thank you, everyone. On behalf of Edu Africa Scholars, I want to thank you in a special way, Linda, for your kind and nice and wonderful and insightful presentation. Like I said before, I really learned a lot. Thank you so much for your kind and your insightful presentation. And uh, I want to tell you that from time to time, we will be inviting you, we need you. Your, your wealth of knowledge is highly, highly and highly required. So thank you. So Linda, yeah. thank you so much. I mean, like I said, it was a superb presentation. And I know that the audience really learned a lot from your presentation today. So thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, see you guys next week, Saturday. Bye, Linda. Bye. Yeah.